In what I think is a genuinely shocking turn of events, Kamala Harris has announced that she is suspending her 2020 campaign. Now, I don't really believe that a lot of people thought that she had what it takes to go the distance, but for her to drop out before Iowa and New Hampshire is genuinely shocking to a lot of political observers. Now, part of the reason why I think she's dropping out is because the deadline to withdraw officially from the California Democratic Party primary was approaching, and she's not polling too well there. So to be a young politician with ambitions for higher office, to lose in your home turf, that's not a good look for, you know, the uh, long-term prospects of your career. So, of course, she made the right decision and acknowledged that, she can't win this, and she chose to drop out. And she released this video explaining why she made this choice. 11 months ago at the launch of our campaign in Oakland, I told you all that I am not perfect, but I will always speak with decency and moral clarity and treat all people with dignity and respect, that I will lead with integrity and I will speak the truth. And so that's what I've tried to do every day of this campaign. And here's the truth today. I've taken stock and I've looked at this from every angle. And over the last few days, I have come to one of the hardest decisions of my life. So here's the deal, guys. Um, my campaign for president simply does not have the financial resources to continue and the financial resources we need to continue. I'm not a billionaire. I can't fund my own campaign. And as the campaign has gone on, it has become harder and harder to raise the money we need to compete. In good faith, I cannot tell you, my supporters and volunteers, that I have a path forward if I don't believe I do. So, to you, my supporters, my dear supporters, it is with deep regret, but also with deep gratitude, that I am suspending our campaign today. But I want to be clear with you, I am still very much in this fight, and I will keep fighting every day for what this campaign has been about, Justice for the people, all the people. So look, I've been critical of Kamala Harris, but credit to her where it's due. She acknowledged that she can't win and she did the right thing. She dropped out. That is exactly what you should do if it seems as if you don't have the money needed to sustain your campaign. Now, this announcement comes after a scandal with regard to one of our top campaign staffers who resigned and penned a scathing letter, essentially saying that out of all of the presidential campaigns that she worked for, Kamala Harris treated her staffers the worst. And part of the problem was that Kamala Harris had a lot of staffers basically uproot their lives for Kamala's campaign. They moved to New Hampshire, and then they kind of uh, looked at the way the wind was blowing, realized that she didn't necessarily have the money to be competitive in other states, so she just focused all of her resources on Iowa. So that means people who literally moved to New Hampshire and were laid off were essentially... Their lives were ruined because of this campaign. So people are angry, and I think rightfully so. And that's not a great way to treat your staffers who put their lives on the line for you, who dedicated, you know, the last 11 or so months to fighting for you. Now, as the New York Times explains, the decision came after weeks of upheaval among Ms. Harris's staff, including layoffs in New Hampshire and at her headquarters in Baltimore, and disarray among her allies. She told supporters in an email on Tuesday that she lacked the money needed to fully finance a competitive campaign. Quote, my campaign for president simply doesn't have the financial resources we need to continue, Ms. Harris wrote. Now, the latest trajectory of her campaign made it seem like this really was inevitable. I thought that she would at least make it to Iowa. Nonetheless, here we are. But when you go back to when she announced her campaign and she launched in Oakland at an event where 20,000 people showed up, it seemed as if she would be a force in this primary, that she was possibly unstoppable. And mind you, after that first debate where she called out Joe Biden, she surged in the polls to a point where she literally surpassed Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, albeit temporarily, but nonetheless, that was a huge jolt to her campaign. However, at that second debate when Tulsi Gabbard went after her, that was essentially the beginning of the end of Kamala Harris's campaign. And on top of that, and part of the reason why she lost is because she backed away from Medicare for All. Now, she acknowledges that there is a war that's going on within the Democratic Party. Um, there's centrists versus progressives, and she was really trying to walk a fine line 
and appease both warring wings when really you're not going to appease both sides. You either have to, you know, plant your feet and flag in one side and roll with it. But she didn't do that. So she initially came into this primary endorsing Medicare for all. And then almost immediately she started to back away after saying we should get rid of private insurance. She then said, well, maybe we shouldn't do that. And then she completely walked away from Medicare for all by proposing her own version with private for-profit health insurers, which is not single payer, that's multi-payer. Um, and that was, you know, another reason why she started to lose. And Elizabeth Warren really should learn from Kamala Harris because what she should take away from this and what future politicians who plan to run for president should take away from this is sometimes when you try to appease everyone, you end up appeasing nobody. Because by coming up with a Medicare for All compromise, she pissed off progressives and centrists like Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg who were attacking her for supporting Medicare for All still just pretended as if she supported real Medicare for all so she appeased nobody so if you're going to run for president you have to start your campaign with true policy convictions and make the case for them and not waver in an attempt to appease critics who are never going to accept what you have to offer they're always going to move the goalpost so kamala harris i mean she's certainly not one of the worst but it's easy to see why she lost and didn't have the momentum to go the distance because she was trying to be malleable in an attempt to be a candidate that represents everybody. But you've got to pick a side. Like, you can't choose to be the candidate for centrists and progressives. One side has to win out, and the other side has to lose. And she didn't acknowledge that, and that is her downfall. And Elizabeth Warren is now seeing that, you know, that same failed strategy may very well be her downfall as well. Now, since Kamala Harris isn't the worst, certainly not the best, but she's not the worst, it is sad to see her go, before billionaires like Michael Bloomberg and Tom Steyer, they absolutely should be dropping out before Kamala Harris. But I will say, you know, I am satisfied that an establishment figure like Kamala Harris has dropped out before anti-establishment figures like Andrew Yang and Tulsi Gabbard. I don't support them, to be clear, but it's nice to see that people who don't have the backing of the establishment can have more longevity than someone who obviously is aligned with the establishment and wants to do their bidding. So the question is, where will Kamala's support go? She was polling at around 4 to 5% on average. So who is going to benefit from Kamala Harris's loss? It's really difficult to tell. I think that her support will be distributed relatively equally, but I think the individuals who will benefit the most probably going to be Elizabeth Warren, maybe Pete Buttigieg, but what we're seeing is there's this portion of the electorate that kind of jumps from Kamala Harris to Elizabeth Warren to Pete Buttigieg. And they're incredibly flexible in their ideology and they just kind of see what the mainstream media is saying about particular candidates and they base their support presumably on that. So I'm not sure where that support will go, but certainly it'll be interesting to see who gains the most from this. But there you have it, Kamala Harris, after launching her campaign with a really strong showing is now out of the race before Iowa and New Hampshire. Um, I certainly didn't see this coming. I think a lot of people didn't see this coming. Um, but even though I didn't necessarily believe that she would be dropping out this early, at least I could take comfort knowing that <laughs> CNN was the most wrong, who had Kamala Harris at number one in their candidate rankings. It just goes to show you that mainstream news analysts don't have their finger on the pulse of america and they don't really know what they're talking about but i mean there you have it this race is certainly interesting and we're starting to see it wind down there's still 16 people running but now we're seeing people drop out and i really hope that other people follow kamala's lead here and acknowledge that if they don't have the financial resources to maintain their campaigns and pay their staffers rather than you know dragging it out and taking up time at the debate they should just drop out and do the right thing if they know that they're not going to win. But, I mean, I'll leave that there. Kamala Harris is out.